today we're going to talk about my favorite subject, houseplants, and we're gonna get intimate. So follow me while I show you my bed. Okay, so this is my bed. And the reason I'm showing you my bed is because I have built this beautiful, well, I didn't build the box, I bought it, but it's this whitewash, vintage, shabby chic box so that I could put plants over my bed so I feel like that feeling of nature, like I'm sleeping in the woods, which feels so good, as you know if you've ever gone in the woods. But what I'm noticing is I have to water these constantly, which tells me they need to be repotted. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we have to take my gardening boots off. They're actually very fashionable. And the reason is because I have to climb on my bed to get this monster down. It's not too heavy, but I'm gonna bring this baby down and put it on this black towel on my floor. turn them around so you can see the more beautiful side. That other side I keep against the wall. Now, the plant, I want to talk about decorating your house with plants because I know you want to pick the most beautiful plants and you want to just put them in these like spots in your house that need something but you don't want a tacky decoration. So a house plant makes sense but you have to consider the plant first. You have to look at the space and say well what plant will go there? If it's a high maintenance plant that needs a lot of sun, it's not gonna work, the plant's gonna die. So in order to do this project, what I had to do was think to myself, what plant will work in the bedroom that is low maintenance, that can go with a moderate amount of light and won't need to be watered a whole lot because I don't want a lot of water dripping on my bed. And so I thought to myself, a philodendron. A philodendron is low light, it's very hard to kill, it is for beginners, it doesn't require a lot of work, it doesn't require a lot of water, but I didn't want an ordinary philodendron because as you can see my bed is white and everything else is dark green. It's either called the lemon lime philodendron or it's called the neon philodendron and you can see why, because they are this beautiful, unique and unusual color. Now, just so you can see the difference of what a regular philodendron looks like versus the neon, I'm gonna show you the regular one, okay? This is the regular philodendron, color-wise. And this is the neon lemon lime. Oh, yeah. So you can see that this lemon lime philodendron, they are the same uh, requirements as far as care goes. It's just this one has a lot more pop in a room that is mostly white, as all my furniture is. So. Let's go back over here and I'm going to show you how I did this and what I've got to do to maintain it. So, okay, so what, first of all, let me say, I don't recommend tackling this kind of project the day after Thanksgiving because these, all plants can kind of go dormant and they don't want to be touched in the winter. And it's not a good idea if you live where I live, which is New Jersey, on the Jersey Shore. But if you live where it's hot all around, it's not going to make a difference. But Ordinarily, I would say wait till the spring, but I have no choice because what's happening is these are starting to require water every 48 hours. So that's telling me that these all need to be repotted. And by repotted, I mean the way I built this was I ordered this beautiful whitewash piece of wood that there's a seller on Amazon. I can't remember his name. Maybe I'll put the link on the bottom. He just sells them at a certain size, but I requested could he make a 50 inch so that I could make it to fit on my bed and instead of repotting them I just ordered these from plantarena.com who I love and um, I shoved them inside so they would hang down my bed they're actually still a tiny bit wet right now but that's because I didn't need the heat on too much but when it gets hot and you can see how deep this is so that's a good at least six inches, right? So what I did was I ordered about 13 of the neon lemon lime philodendrons and I stuck them in this box and just popped it on my bed, simple. So when I water it, I could just put a little water in and then 
take it down. But what's happening now is they're getting too dry too fast. So I end up watering them too frequently. But the nice thing is they don't need that much sun. So if you want your house to look beautiful, you can put plants everywhere. You just want to stick to low maintenance if you're going to be in a place like a bedroom. Unless you have beautiful lighting or ceiling lighting, but you can still have plants that require less light. Now, if you love the way that looked over my bed, here's what you're going to have to do. You can order boxes like these or get them anywhere. Just make sure they're somewhat deep so that this is a about a three or four inch plant, see? But if you turn it this way, it's big and beautiful and healthy, and it's such a cool color. It really pops with the shabby chic white rustic whitewash. I mean, the regular green variety will be just as gorgeous. So here, I've taken them all out. And you don't have to get what I got. I mean, you could get something similar, but as you can see, this is about 50 inches. I think he makes them like half this size and I just wrote to him and said, can you make it double? And you could probably make one yourself if you have a handy husband and just whitewash it. But here's mine. So what I've got to do now is I've got to put all of these guys into here, pop them out of their pot and put it in dirt. So I'll let you watch some of it and then we'll fast forward toward for most of it so I don't bore you to death, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna do something I would normally never do and I don't even know what's gonna happen but because of the nature of the placement of this particular decor I'm going to line this box with paper bags you know how um, plastic bags you know how first of all they're not biodegradable so we're really not using them anymore so you don't want to quite throw them out and everyone kind of has like a big bunch of them shoved in a cabinet in their kitchen somewhere so I'm gonna use them in a way I've never used before. Whoa. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do is, the reason I'm doing something very unusual that I would never do before is because I don't want the water dripping on my bed every time I water this plant. So I'm just gonna shove these gently in so that when I put the soil on, it will have this layer, so most of it will stay in the soil, most of the water. And I'm gonna water it lightly when I do water it. Because what I would normally tell you is, easy on the water and let it drain through the bottom, which is what I would do. I would take these outside and water them, but as you can see, there's so many. And this is a low maintenance plant, so it's not likely to care if I don't put a whole lot of water on it. Every once in a while, I'm just gonna have to like take it out, which this is a project I would normally do outside, but it's too cold out. Now, probably it's a good idea to not mess around with these things in the winter, but I can't help myself because I love plants, so. The worst thing that can happen is one plant dies and you lose a few leaves, don't freak out about it, it happens. So, you're just gonna have to get used to it. <laughs> Layer this off too much, but I do want, I, my, let's put it this way. The plants are replaceable, the bed would cost a whole lot more. So I'm just putting two layers down because I just don't want to, you know, make mold and I don't want it dripping onto my headboard. So, that's it. Now I'm gonna put the soil on top of this, okay? So, that's enough for that for right now. Let's grab our soil. Okay, so if you notice, another thing I did was I just laid a big towel underneath me, just so I don't make too much of a mess. All right, so um, I'm gonna put a nice light layer of soil along the bottom. I really, a lot of people wear gloves to do this. I personally love putting my hands in the soil and touching the soil, I really love it. Another thing is that it won't over, it won't put too much soil in here because I've layered the bottom. Now, you might, you can you get more creative than me. You could put like leaves down there. I'm just gonna use these bags for right now because I can always take them out. I personally love putting soil on my hands. I'm just gonna put this first layer down before we start playing with the plants themselves. 
yeah, soil feels good to me. I love being in the earth. If you're someone who loves gardening, you would find this a fun thing to do. It's just not too wise to do it inside your house, but it's cold out and we're on the floor. Well, it's not a big deal, we'll just sweep it up. And the nice thing about the philodendron is, as well is you can just give it nice regular uh, potting soil. You don't have to go crazy with cactus mixes or anything like that. It's gonna do just fine. And as with any um, plant, you want to give it like an inch below the root system, okay? So let me just finish layering the bottom. popping out because if there's roots popping out you already know that it's outgrowing its pot but you give a little squeeze to the bottom and as you do and you don't want to do this with a really wet plant as you do you pull okay so you can see there he's pretty root bound so he actually needs to be repotted so what I'm gonna do and he's nice and dry as I said they're drying out so quick this is the first one so he is gonna go right there oh, I could feel some of the roots already getting just a little disturbed which is again why I chose this particular plant so there he is all right so he's in now I'm gonna put a little more soil in there so they will have fresh soil when I water it the roots can are free to like come out and plus I've got that bagging down there so let's do some more so here we're gonna take out another one look at the bottom I don't see any too bad coming out oh there's some there so you want to grab the plant very, very gently, okay? And then you're going to yank it, squeeze, pinch the bottom, and yank the plant out. And there it is. And as long as it's not super wet, it should be fine. And I'm going to put this guy in next. Because now that they're in new soil, they're really going to grow. Most plants do go dormant in the winter time, and so they won't grow that much, and they will require a whole lot less water. But I don't know about you, but I like my bedroom warm. I like to sleep where it's kind of warm, so I guess the, the plant must get confused because it's like, well, it's winter, but I feel warm, so do I go dormant or not? So here we go, I'm gonna pull out another one. I'm just gonna pull out a few before I fast forward. So there we go. They all needed to be repotted anyway, which is that the, the plant was telling me I need to be repotted. That's why I'm, the soil's dry every day. All right, so now I'm gonna go much more quickly. But if you wanna watch again here, make sure you're not getting it on your house. But here, this one just fell out. And save those little pots for yourself because you can, you can make babies out of these when they start to get too long. I'm gonna have no choice but to cut them because otherwise I'm, they're gonna be dangling on my head in my sleep and I don't want that. But at the same time, I do like them long, but as they dangle and get longer, just like I showed you in my previous video, we can cut them and vine them and make new plants. so that they would fit but here we go don't worry because this, this plant will grow in and fill in any spots that so there's the last spot and I'm gonna stick it right there so it can this guy like dangling down the side he can get as long as he wants it's just these guys in the front I don't want them hitting my head I want them to get long but now this is gonna be a little trickier than repotting most Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to, if you were to look at this, you would say, what's wrong? Don't do anything. It's perfect. But I know that between these leaves, I've left soil gaps. So I've got to go in now. And it's just like repotting in a bigger pot, but I've done it in a rectangle piece of wood. 
So I'm gonna just take some soil and I'm gonna go in and I can see there where I've shoved the plants, but there's soil missing. So I'm simply gonna go through the plant and I'm gonna put some nice, fresh, beautiful soil so these roots can have a place to grow and more nutrients. Pack it down a little bit. You don't want any air pockets. Let's see, so I put one here, so there's the next one. You can see in there that it needs soil. Because these guys were taken out of their original pot that they were probably grown in. So let it sink down. And you could just be very gentle with the leaves and look around and just work my way down through the next plant. They were I put enough on the bottom, so that, but remember those plastic bags are under there, so I don't know what's gonna happen. Hopefully that was a good idea. <laughs> so here, here's, oh, I lost a leaf, damn. Okay, there is a little hole there I gotta fill in. But remember, if you lose a leaf, don't freak out about it. It's not a big deal, just stay chill. And take a conscious breath and have fun. Fun with it. All right. There's a big gap right there. So, you see, I moved some downs because we wanted the plant to have enough, um, enough room to make it look like one giant long plant. So let me just make sure I didn't miss any. Oh, there's a little, I missed a little gap right there. Okay, next one. Oh, there's a big gap there. So I'm probably going through a 25% of an average bag of soil with this. But now that these guys are getting um, nice, fresh soil and I'm about to water them, I have a feeling they're gonna grow substantially because they're not trying to suck the last bit of nutrients out of the little tiny pot they were had been living in. Because this soil is gonna pack a punch, it's gonna feed them, I'm gonna have to water it too. But I, this is the last one here, okay? But I love the way this looks. I love this plant. This is the one of the, my, my favorite plants. I mean, it's just such a beautiful color green in nature. This neon, it's perp, uh, lost another, another leaf. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter because a whole bunch of leaves are about to be born, so. I love this color green. Oh, we gotta get that last bit on the corner. I think this is one of the more beautiful colors you could find in nature. When you find pink leaves, oh, that, that'll make you go crazy. It's so exciting. It's so rare. So, just filling him up and that's it, we're done. So the whole project took like 15 minutes. We were very gentle. We're gonna go through and double check and make sure we didn't miss any spots. In the meantime, I took out a hip and a knee, but I'll live. <laughs> and I think this is a really good way to keep yourself grounded and in the present moment, and just feeling good. I'm gonna put a little more on the corner because I expect on the corner they're gonna really drape down. And I don't mind because they're not gonna hit me in the head in my sleep on the sides. They're gonna dangle down and get really long. All right, so let me move the soil. Now we're gonna water. All right, this is gonna be a little tricky because we're watering inside and I, I already know that wood leaks, okay? It's not waterproof. But we did pack the bottom with that plastic, so we're gonna water gently, okay? We don't have to go all crazy, but you know I love watering my plants. I almost wish that some of them required more watering because I just think watering plants is so therapeutic. I really do, it makes me, maybe because I'm so maternal, you know, I have children, I have four children, and I love taking care of them. And as they get older, they need, they require you to care for them less and less, whereas plants always need you. This is a very healthy way to get your maternal instincts met and your paternal. I don't wanna leave out any guys out there who love plants. I'm gonna give them a little bit of a wash too, so. Now, I don't wanna water them so much that the water stays in and any roots drown because now they don't have a drainage hole, okay? So, but I do wanna make sure all of the soil gets wet. And 
it, you can expect them to go a little bit into shock because when it, whenever the, um, the root system is disturbed, the plant is like, what's wrong? What's happening to me? You know, it's kind of like a little surgery for them. It would be like an alien coming and ripping all your clothes off and then putting you back in a nice new outfit. So not that plants think, but they definitely have some rudimentary consciousness and they are alive. Well, we won't get me started on consciousness. It's my other <laughs> favorite subject. So it looks like I missed some soil there. Damn. All right. Yep, I missed a whole one. Okay. Here, look at this. Nice. I'm gonna water there so it gets in the, I'll just have to remember to put soil in there later. Oh, my favorite therapy, watering plants. I love gardening in the summer too, but I, I really love house plants. I love to collect rare plants that are very hard to find. Okay, so that was the minimal watering. You don't wanna go much heavier if you're watering inside your house and it's winter time and it's gonna, you're about to put it on your bed but I do want to make sure I got all the soil because this is the first time since for the plant since it's been repotted. Now the roots are going to grow down into that soil because I put about an inch and a half of soil down there. Here, my dog's eating them. All right, so basically I gave that whole thing this much water. But I did, and I gave it about that much soil on the bottom for it to grow down. And in about, probably by next summer, we can take it all out and repot it again, or maybe we could put a different plant in. So, all right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just waiting a few minutes so that I'm giving the water a chance to sink into the soil. And if it's gonna drain through the wood at all, it's gonna do it on my towel, so it's not gonna go on my bed. And as soon as a few minutes goes by and that's done, we're gonna lift it back and put it back on my bed. And you're gonna see how beautiful it looks. And, Maybe you can try it at home. By the way, while we're here, let me talk about my favorite plant in the world. It's this, okay? This is called a rosary vine. It is also known as a chain of hearts because each leaf looks like a little heart and it grows crazy fast, especially in the summer. I put it in this tall bucket, but it's really only about to there, see? It's kind of bald on top because I made this one. I just propagated this from my other one. So anytime a, a rosary vine falls off, I shove it in there so it will grow and make a new one in this beautiful, beautiful pot. But it's in the grow pot inside that pot. But I have um, a chain of hearts. I should have made a video. Two up there where I cut the plant in half and put them into the new pot so they could hang from the ceiling because these are the most gentle, gentle, beautiful vines. And you know what I love about them trailing down is that because of their gentleness, it gives, it gives the feeling almost like of a soft rain. And how, how beautiful is the name, the rosary vine? I mean, it makes me think of like Mother Mary praying the rosary. Like they're just so beautiful. You probably could pray the rosary on these. So that's my, one of my um, rosary vines. And I'm definitely doing a video because I have to say this is my most I think it's the most beautiful house plant there is. And I have three gorgeous ones upstairs that are about six feet long. But this is a new guy, so I just started making him. And that is my favorite plant, but we'll worry about him for another video. In the meantime, let's check out and see if this guy is dripping and what's happening. Well, I can tell you by how heavy it is, if I watered him enough. Oh yeah, he's heavy. If this falls on me in the night. Do you need help? I'm a goner. You ain't here. This is my daughter's summer. She looks just like me, but not as gorgeous as me. Whoa. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right, so she's gonna help me put it back up onto the bed. So let's, uh, let's show them the finished product. Whoa! <laughs> okay, so let's see the finished product. And there you have it. The Lemon Lime Neon Pothos whitewashed wooden bedroom decor. Very low maintenance, very beautiful, very nice to sleep under.
But now that that new soil's in there, these guys are gonna grow and they're gonna trail down. And I think I'm gonna cut them right about here. I'll let them grow down and I'm gonna cut them and then make all new plants with that. And then I let these grow down the side because that'll be really pretty. Again, I'm Laura Thompson and that was my video on how to use live plants to decorate unusual spaces like your bedroom and using the right plant so that you don't kill it. And I hope you liked it and it gave you some inspiration and ideas and don't be limiting yourself like, oh, I have to do this in the summertime. I just did it and it's November, so you can do it too. And if you like that video and you wanna see more, hit like and subscribe because I love making YouTube videos. I think it's so fun and it gives me a creative expression outlet because I love houseplants. And for anyone that loves houseplants, you'll like my channel. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time.